Hi everyone, this is Mohiuddin Ahmed from Singapore Maths Academy. Welcome to our 11 plus mini series. We're here to support parents that are struggling somewhat in preparing their children with their 11 plus maths um, needs. So let's get started by jumping onto the iPad and let's see what we can do today's session. So today's session is going to be on place value. It's our first video. So if we make a few mistakes, please do forgive us. But if we have um, helped you in any way, please do let us know as well. Um, so today's lesson is on place value. We're going to look at year four place value. And because of 11 plus, we have to kind of step it up a little bit. Year four typically look at numbers up to 10,000. But we want to go beyond that to up to 100,000 in year four and around about a million the beginning of year five and 10 million um, by the end of year five. So place value in year three typically, ha what happens in year three? Year three, children look at numbers up to 1,000, believe it or not. By year four, in primary schools, children look up to numbers, uh, look at numbers up to rather 10,000. And in year five, they look up numbers up to um, 1 million. It's a big jump from year four to year five, right? And year six, it's up to 10 million. That's your typical primary school. So with 11 plus, by the time they start year six, they need to know their numbers up to 10 million. So it means that we've got to be a bit ahead of our times um, if we're going to prepare our children for 11 plus grammar schools, which typically have exams around about September um, of year six. So let's jump on and see what we can do. Okay. Firstly, our children have to be confident by this stage of understanding and knowing how many ones are in 10 and how many tens are in 100 and how many hundreds are in 1000 and so forth. And to do that, what we recommend from an early stage, from around about year one, even reception possibly in different ways, um, we look at visually seeing and playing with numbers with concrete objects. So these are deans on my app and you can use deans, physical deans, which we have somewhere around in my room here, in my office. Um, but we can see that we've got tens, we've got ones, and actually 10 and two makes 12, right? But 12 can also just be lots of ones, okay? And so when we have lots of ones like this, it can be a bit messy, right? What, what would help us is if we can organize our numbers so that we can see it clearly. And that's where place value really comes in. We can see numbers in a more structured way and it's easier for us to count. So for example, if we have 10 here and we add another 10, we can see there's two 10s. And add another 10, we can see there's three 10s. We say three 10s is 30, four 10s is 40 and so forth. Now in England, um, the way the language itself, the way we say numbers, it's a bit more complicated than in other parts of the world and especially in Europe, where when we say something like 14, it doesn't seem like there's anything specific to 14. Whereas if we say something like um, 50, it's five tens or 200 is two lots of hundreds. 500 is five lots of hundreds. Um, 6,000 is six lots of thousand or 8 million is eight lots of millions, right? That's quite specific. That's very direct um, and it's very literal. Whereas 14 or 13 or um, other numbers um, can seem like, you know, um, it's, it's quite random, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, then 14, 15, 16. So there is some structure there sometimes and sometimes there isn't structure. So that's where we have to be a bit more careful with our language and the way we kind of go through numbers is very visually like we've seen on this um, app. But because we're looking at numbers up to 10,000, we can't use deans. We have to use something like place value counters, which is something like this. So I'm going to start off by saying, well, in year three, we looked up numbers up 10,000, right? So what does that mean? It's got, we've got a thousand here, another thousand here, 2,000. 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000. And what happens when we have 10,000s? Oh, look at that. 
we've got 10 lots of thousands, 10,000. And when we have 10 lots of thousands, we can put it into the thousands column, right? But they turn into something else. What do they turn into class? They turn into 10,000. 10 lots of thousands turns into 10,000. If I break this up now, if I break it up, it becomes, let's see if it works. <laughs> it's not working here. Okay, I will leave it there. So 10,000 there. So when we have 10 lots of 1,000s, it's 10,000. But what happens if I add another 1,000? What do you think that number is? Ah, oh, look, we've got 10,000 and another 1,000 makes 11,000. What about if I add another 100? Oh, 11,100. 11, 11,110, 11,111, 11,112. 11, so let's write that down. How do we write 11,000? 11,000 is one, um, it's one 10,000 and another 1,000 and one 100 and 110 and two ones. Wow, lots of ones there, right? So that's how we write down 11,112. How would we write down 23,000 class? How would we write down 23,243? Um, how would we write that down? Is that right at the moment? No, it's not, right? How are we going to write this down? So we've got two lots of 10,000, which is 20,000. 3,000, three lots of thousands. We've got two lots of hundreds. We've got five tens there. One, two, three. Actually, no, we've got one, two, three, four tens there. And we've got three ones. So 23,243. Brilliant. So we can see that each place value column is important because it, tells us how many of that place value there are. So we've got two here. There's two, lots of 10,000s, for example. So how do we go on beyond this? Let's have a look. Let's rub this off. And let me ask you, class, okay? Let's see. Who can tell me how do we write down 5,023? How would we write that down? Is it possible for us to write that down? Let's have a look. Let me choose all of these and let's get rid of all of these. Okay, we are clear. There we go. It's all gone. All right, so how do I do this now? What do I need to do to write down 5,023? I think I said, right? I need five lots of thousands. One, two, three, four, five lots of thousands, 23, are there any hundreds in 23? There isn't, right? 23 is two tens and three ones. That's 5,023. So this is 5,023. Let me write that down, 5,023. But hold on, if I just wrote 523, that just makes 523. But we've got 5,000. Ah, don't forget that there's zero hundreds here. So even though there's no hundreds, it's blank, we still have to write that down as our place value holder to show and say or write the fact that we've got zero hundreds, it means we've got 5,000 and two tens and three ones, and the zero hundred makes the number 5,023. If I got rid of the zero, it would just be 523. So that's really important. Now, that's 5,023. What about if I asked you to look at a number like 35,023? How would I do that? Ah, I would need three lots of 10,000s, right? That's 30,000. And I've got 5,023 already. So 35,023 is written like this, 35,023. Now, can you make certain numbers? How would you make 14,025? How would you make 30,705? Uh, 30, How would you make 12,358? These are numbers that are a bit more tricky, but I think you can do it. Can you do it? Can you use your place value chart? Can you write down the digits you need for those numbers? 
and I'm sure your parents will give you a few more numbers to try out as well. So that's how we can make different numbers using our place value chart and our place value disks like in this app that we've just been going through. So let's go through um, a few other key parts using this app. Let me clear this up and let's get rid of all of that. Now, what can we do next? Can we write down numbers in words? Can you write down this number in words? What number is this in words? We've got three lots of ten thousands. We've got three lots of thousands. We've got three hundreds. We've got three tens, which makes 30. And we've got three ones. So we've got this really unusual number, right? Of all threes. So how do I do that? How am I going to write this down? How am I going to write this down in words? I've done it with digits, with numerals, but can we write this down in words? Have a go at that and see what you get. We should get, and you can pause the video if you want before I reveal the answer, but we should get 33,000. 333, 33,333. And it's sometimes useful to work backwards. Do we know what this number is on its own? Yeah, it's three. Do we know what these two numbers are? 33. Do we know what these three numbers are? 333. What about these four? 3,333. And now I've got 30,300, 33,000, excuse me, 333. So it can help if we work from the back, from the ones to the first digit. That way we can kind of build up our understanding of each part until we get to the final number. So have a go at some of those. Um, I'm sure your parents will give you a few more to try out. I might give you one more. Can you write down how to um, spell out or can you write in words um, 56,020, 56,020. That's a bit more tricky because there are certain parts there that are, I suppose, place value holders, right? Might You might think they're missing. But 56,020, how does that look like? Let's see. Can we use our place value counters? 56,000. So I'm going to have 50,000. Six lots of thousands. And also, one, two, three, four, five, six, 56,020. 20, I said, right? 56,020. Can you see that there are no hundreds and there are no ones? So how would you write that down? I'll let you have a go. And I'm sure your parents can give you a few more of these questions up to 100,000, so under 100,000 for you to have a go at. So that's writing in words. Now, what else can we do? We can also um, ask you questions based on certain numbers. So if I have this number, I won't say which number this is just yet. And you can kind of think about what number I'm making and you can tell me what number I have. If I've got this number here, how are we going to say that number out firstly? Okay. But that's something you can shout out on your screen if you want. But also, once we've done that, we can write down the number. I'm about to write down the number. So we've got 60,000, six lots of 10,000s. We've got four lots of thousands. We've got 300. We've got three tens and we've got five ones so it's 64,335 if i asked you what does a four what does a four what value does a four have in this number 64,335 the four stands for 4,000 what does the five stand for it stands for five ones on its own what does the six stand for it stands for 60,000 what about the two threes one three stands for 30 and the other three stands for 300 and so 
we can see that we have to know each individual digit and the value of each individual digit. And so you can have a go at making your own numbers up to 100,000 and deciding what each digit stands for. Okay, we're going to finish off our lesson here, uh, our mini series, with one more, um, one more thing that we can go through before we finish off is seeing patterns. Okay, so if I've got this number here, I've got this number. What number is that, firstly? This number is, let's have a look, is 21,325. 21,325. Okay, great. So we've got 21,335. What can we do with this? Let's have a look. All right, let me just move this across here so that we have a bit more space. And I'm going to ask you, um, what do you think would happen if I add another 10,000? What would happen? Oh, look, only this digit 2 will increase by 1. Now we've got 31,325. What happens if I add another one? Oh, now we've got 41,325. Nothing else changes but the 10,000 column, right? If I add another 1,000, it becomes 42,325. So if I just add 1,000, I don't have to use column addition. I can just straight away see I'm adding another 1,000. If I add another 300, at the moment we've got 300 here. If I add another 300, what happens? 100, 200, 300, we've added another 300. Ah, that becomes now, what does it become? Let's have a look, let's rub this out. It becomes 42,000, would you say? 42,625. We had 42,325 at first. I added another 300 and look what happened. It became 600, but everything else stays the same. So you can have a go, a few more attempts at that those types of questions of your parents, and I'm sure they will give you a few more for you to have a go at. So this is the end of our series. Um, my name is Mahiuddin Ahmed. I'm the founder of Singapore Maths Academy. Um, I hope you found this lesson beneficial. This is our first lesson in the mini series. Um, and I hope that we can improve on these videos. It's our first one. We're not used to making these types of videos. We've made lots of other ones but we're getting used to making these types of videos. So if we can improve our videos, do let us know how we can do that. And we would love to hear from you. If you'd like any tuition from us, please do contact Singapore Maths Academy and we would love to support you. We specialize in 11 plus. We focus on CSSC maths as well as uh, independent school uh, exams as well. So we look forward to our next video and seeing you in our next video. Thank you and take care. Bye.